Hello everyone, good morning. We have 11,500 Kafras to go, and then we're done. That's still like a lot of Kafras, but we've made some pretty good progress on it. It wasn't that long ago, it was like 24,000 Kafras, so we're chipping away. Chipping away for sure. I hate the new, like, menu thing. I hate this fade-in. Can I turn that off? I gotta be able to turn that off, right? Uh... Miscellaneous? If I can't turn that off, I'm gonna rage. I'm gonna contact PA support. Not that they listen to me, because they don't. Maybe it's an option when you're talking to them. I don't know. Sure isn't. That is horrible. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. That's horrible. Anyway, good morning, everyone. Hello, Boobliz. Mr. Cookie, good morning. Cubix, how's it going? Hopefully you guys are doing well. Should be able to get C6 Ergons today. Something like that. I think there I think I have like 162 Kaffers to go for C6, I'm not sure. This guy here as well. Okay, we'll swap one more time and then we may end up going to a different spot. Question for what you think I should do for my gear. 29352, 887 sheet AP. Should my second Tet Disto. Should me 303, 900 sheet AP. Come our DP and grind Cryptor Ash. Three. How does a Disto get you to 303? I'm not sure how that works. 298, not 289. Okay. 
Okay, so here's the thing, Mr. Cookie. You definitely don't have enough DP to do either places, and for Crypt specifically, you don't have enough of either. So, like, 301 probably wouldn't even be enough for Crypt. I would just, like... I would just give up on the idea of doing Crypt until you do Ash, because Ash is so much easier than Crypt. It's not even close. But... I guess it sort of depends a little bit on what your final build looks like. Because if your final build doesn't have two Distos, which it shouldn't currently, but then again, double rings are coming out, so it's a big question mark now. You know what I mean? So like if your final build has two Distos, I would go for another Disto. If it doesn't, I would just go to Ash Forest and work on a Debo Neck, because that will be part of the final build, right? This guy here too. Okay, we gotta go find another spot, I guess. But you'll have to decide if you want the set effect from the rings. I think there's a five demo set effect now, right? Get more DP, get a demo neck by gunning there. That's what I would do for sure, yeah. And then for the disto, like. You could just buy that if you wanted to. It's going to cost you more money to get the Ted Debo, I think, than it would to buy a Disto. But I don't think that you need it for Ash Forest. I think you're fine at 298. Looks like we're over here today. I think there will be what I have to see. Well, they added a set effect to tongue grads, right? Or they're adding a set effect to tongue grads because they're just not good enough now. But it's a five set effect, which is a little bit weird. So I'm not sure what the plan is for the future. Okay, let's. See if I even remember how to do this. That's good. Let's grab a food buff. Actually turn on the loot scroll. Okay. Peepo shark. my dp is super cheap compared to ap right now yeah you'll need to for sure but i think like even 301 401 doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for crypt gonna die a lot there no matter what still comfortably sitting on tap bags yeah I think um, it depends a little bit on your class, but I know I was on a ninja at like 385 DP at Ash, and was just fine. But it kind of depends on how comfortable you are. That was a long time ago as well, so I'm sure it's changed a little bit since then. Lana squishy? Yeah, maybe you want more then. Maybe you actually just want the 401 bracket. I don't know. But I, uh, I just ran a Frenzy. I didn't run Elixirs or anything, so. Maybe 380 something with Elixirs would be easier. You couldn't get Elixirs when I was doing Ash Forest, so. I didn't bother with them. But. I just run Frenzy 2, I'm lazy. Well, I mean, elixirs are just purchasable now, right? And they weren't before. And you'll need them eventually. You will not do crypt without elixirs, period. So, keep that in mind. You may as well start ordering them.
But I do think that you could do Ash Forest without Elixirs. That's not as big of a deal. Use some Elixirs myself, because AFK Alchemy. Guess I'll start keeping some for myself. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. I'm gonna do Crypt at any point. I mean, just, uh, just go look at Choice, you know what I mean? He's, like, one of the most geared players in the game on Elan. And he dies with Elixirs sometimes, you know what I mean? So, Elixirs are way better than a Frenzy for tankiness. A new class will be fun and tanky. <laughs> I don't know about tanky. I don't know how big they are on doing tanky anymore. I guess scholars like fairly tanky. This guy say so wouldn't want to put too much effort into it. That's fair. They know it's not going to sell as well, so. They just give it to the interns and say, here you go. That's pretty funny. For s we need a drop rate event. Wait, there is a drop rate event. There's a 50%. Hey. I'm just hoping Devil Rings will have you farm witches coins to get them. Make people suffer. I don't think that's happening. I think it'll be something different. I think it's a coin from one of the new grind spots and not from like the ones that we know. I about the UI and the exchange tab, how it was like offset. I do remember that and it is fixed now. Or at least it was fixed last time I looked. Yeah. It's fixed. Gears has that space. It was just it was just fixed one day. I don't know. I didn't do anything to like cause it to happen. It was just fixed. Watch your ultimate challenge and you were discussing the pen accessories so you could use it as storage. What? Oh the the Jatina pen. <laughs> could use it as storage. Can't remove the materials. If you put it in, still not allowed to use it. So the thing is, Alexander, we just decided not to do Jatina pens. So the whole the whole system is just totally not going to happen. So there's no point in putting anything in there because I can't use the accessory anyway. That was the decision that came of that as we just decided not to. I'm excited for Idol Ball Hammers because I get to gamble them again. I haven't even been claiming the hammers on my main account because there's like nothing left to gamble. I just don't care about it, you know? Proven now though. Got 300 fail sacks building Pen Black Star. Started at 200. Oof. It's good stack to get, I guess.
just accessories. So all Jatina is off limits. Exclamation rules if you would like more details on that. But it, uh, there'll be no Jatina armors, weapons, or accessories. Nothing from Jatina at all. Good luck. It should go okay. I don't think it'll be that bad. Okay, time space in the UI. The other one got none, then RNG carried. Well, I mean, I'm not necessarily any luckier than before. So, I don't know. I, have, I also haven't really been enhancing too much. This came 10 times harder, in my opinion. Good luck. Uh, it's actually not that bad, still. Like, because of the aura changes, the boss aura changes, boss gear is actually just not hard at all to get anymore. Like, that's not going to be the hard part. You do field bosses to get armor. I tried a field boss train one time, and it was like the least organized thing I've ever seen in my entire life so I did try one um, I'm not usually around when bosses spawn though so it's a little bit hard to to do that I don't actually have like that big of a window to play the game you know what I mean but I do go to bosses when I can to get auras and have a chance at the boss drop And I have a Kudum and a Nuver already. Just because that's what's dropped. And then like 100 and, 160 auras or something that I'm sitting on right now. Can exchange 100 laden for one boss armor. Yep. Or weapon. Got to see the stream. We're here. We're live. Good morning. First purple. Okay. On the right. Okay. So watching Iron Man Journey, really liked it. I hey, appreciate you watching. Glad you're enjoying it. We're pretty far now. We've come a long way. We're almost done actually, which is uh, interesting. Which armor do you pre-order first? Rio? Is that pre-order? Gloves are armor weapon. That is a complex question. Pry? Prioritize. Okay. I see what you're saying. It's situational. It's incredibly situational, Alexander. Um, in my particular case, I'm going to be prioritizing gloves because I lack accuracy and I have a hard time hitting mobs. I don't know if you watched the latest Ultimate Iron Man video, but we missed like half our hits plus on polys. So I need to prioritize accuracy, and because of that, I'm gonna go for gloves first. And the reason for that is because I already have an obsidian main hand from the quest line, and it has a similar amount of accuracy as Zarka. 
so I wouldn't really gain anything from Gonzarka. So we'll be going bags first. After that, weapons all day long. As long as you can hit your target and you're not going to die, you just go weapons. So I'll probably go bags and then dandy. Curious about Dragon Sogma 2 videos for members only? Curious about your decision. It is not for members only, Bite Bunny. It's just that I have a membership tier that allows early access to videos. And I've uploaded a lot of videos. They will be released once a day, basically, to everyone. It's not restricted purely to members. And the first one is out right now to everyone, right? And later today, the second one will come out. So, it, you shouldn't even see those videos, and the reason that you do see them is because they're in the playlist, and that's the only way that you can see them. It's not telling you that you have to buy membership to watch the video. It's saying that it's early access to members. And it is scheduled to release to everyone at a later date, right? You do the production by yourself? Yep. Yep. I cannot afford to hire anybody to do anything for me, so that's where we're at. Morning, and Exo. How's it going? You're juiced? What do you mean, juiced? We're just chipping away at Kaffers, man. We're working on it. We'll get there. How do you like the Ranger? I can't actually say because I've done virtually nothing on it. Um, we have AFK'd on a horse for the last like month, month and a half, whatever it's been. And that's pretty much it. My Ranger is still level 60. It, uh, I've never even tried Awakening yet and so on. We're just not in a position to like actively play that account, so... I have no idea. I don't even know a combo. I'm a Saron gear. We are getting there for sure. I do need to hit a duo Labresca still. But we should be able to afford that in the time that we're going for the last bit of Kafras. Now it won't take long. Uh, I don't know. 11,500 Kafras is a good like 130 hours, 140 hours. And uh, with all the editing and the full-time job and stuff, I don't I don't get as much time in as I'd like. Did you raise a T9? I haven't even gotten a Courser T8 yet. I'm trying to get a Courser without coupons. Because that's what I'll have to do. And uh, I've not even come close to a Courser yet. I've done, I think, three or four T8s now. And they've all been really bad. about the fairy fairy is still terrible yep i have a tier one fairy currently but again like i've been playing the account so i haven't been getting the pedals to roll them but if i can get miraculous cheer four or five honestly i'd be happy i don't need anything too crazy with it morning talon
that can make it work gives us hope We're working on it it's definitely like not that hard to do an iron man but the uh the ultimate is going to be very interesting i think with the growth of the channel rooting for you hey appreciate it we've been going for quite a while but uh that's all right. We keep we keep pushing. Think about starting playing BDO. Interesting. You're not currently a BDO player. Hmm. Another butcher only. Do you like grinding? Is that something that you enjoy doing? Because if you do, this is the place for you. Nope. Oh, man. Well, that's about 99.8% of the game is grinding, so I don't know. This is this is the majority of what you do right here. Just lurk and watch Iron Man videos. Interesting. kind of cool I also watch like stuff of games that I don't play or have interest in playing which is interesting kind of cool thing YouTube is nice in that way you get to explore a lot of different things mandatory two hours yeah two hours a day every day for the rest of your life basically and then if you want to actually get somewhere, you do like four hours a day every day for the rest of your life. I ran through Nightvender today and I got 16 Kafras from all of Nightvender. It's pretty horrible. Better than nothing, I guess, but... Man. That was a lot of energy for 16 Kafras. Hey Ryuichi, doing pretty good. Making some hefty progress. Gotta push through it. Planning to try Throne and Liberty. Um, I have heard virtually nothing about the game except that it's tab targeting, which really is honestly just a big turn off. So I don't currently have plans to do so. I'm not gonna rule it out because I am trying to like explore other things and do other things on at least Sunday we do like something else but currently no plans doesn't really look like something I'm going to be interested in personally but I don't know Join Kutuga lately. Come back to BDO. Addiction was too much. Managed to stay away only a couple months. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. Kutuga was one of my main spots for like years. So. It's a comfy place, man. What's good DP to grind at Gyphon Underground if I'm not used to grinding high-end spots? So here's the thing, Jordy. You're gonna die. 
It doesn't even matter what your DP is, you're gonna die if you don't know the mechanics and you're not used to it. But if you want to die only when you mess up and not just all the time, I would probably say around 380 DP. It's a good entry point to only die when you mess up. But at 401, if you mess up, you die. At 450, if you mess up, you die. So there is no number that's going to like free you from having to learn. But I would say 380 is a very good like entry point. I'm grinding out obvious spots for cups. You almost done with that or you got a ways to go yet? You kind of missed out on the cup event thing they had, right? Butchered the Marnie Realms Katuga though. I don't like Marnie Realm anyway, so I never even gone in there. I'm not a big fan of the Marnie Realm. Need you to try Throne of Liberty and Blade and Soul. Neo? Or some proxy experience? Blade Is there like a second Blade and Soul that's called Neo now? Using a silver iron for pen or guns through Jatina. I see. Good old Urgans. What a wild ride this Iron Man has been, by the way. To this day, we would not have Urgans without the Jatina swap method. I guess, like, since they did the aura changes, we probably would have had Urgans, but it's so crazy to me. How hard they were to get. My for some spots is way better than normal. Yeah, but I, I just disagree with the concept. I don't think that you should take players out of the game in a game that already is super empty. New server. I see. Yeah, I don't want to like, I don't want to rule it out. But there's a lot of games I do currently want to play as well. Like right now we're doing Elden Ring. Um, we just finished Dogma. We're doing Elden Ring now. And I'm getting the Dragon's Dogma videos up. Eventually we'll start launching some Elden Ring videos, things like that. So... Imagine grinding cups, putting them on distos, then trying to enhance without crons. At least hundreds of hours. Surely that's not me. That couldn't be you. Maveler. Normal history good for burning Agris and using level 2. It is pretty good, yep. Nothing wrong with it at all. Why no one likes Seraph Neck? Uh, it's just not good. It has less AP than other necklaces, so. That's it. It just doesn't have enough AP to keep up. Elden Ring is awesome. Yeah, we played some of it on Sunday. We've been stomping, man. I've been having a much easier time than I thought. We started as a wretch. Just been stomping. Been around much. She's there. I'm working two jobs at the moment. Hey, no stress. No stress. You're busy. I get it. I too am busy, so I understand. Purple on the left. Window cleaning sucks of the wind. <laughs> I've slashed my eyes too many times. Are you on like one of them scaffolding things? Are we talking large buildings? 
I guess you wouldn't even have to be that high up to be to be like Ufta. Ladder, but three story. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to lose some legs there. Another butcher. Legs, life. No, no, no. If you land on your legs first, and you crumple like a like a car, you know how engine compartments have the crumple zones. Just imagine that your legs are the crumple zones. You just break every bone in your body six hundred times, up to your legs, and then you're safe. They'll break your fall. You'd be all right. Obsessed with building an evasion focused Dark Knight. That is an interesting choice. I don't know how well that's going to work for you, but good luck. Crazy, but then again, I was crazy once, yeah. Back when you took an arrow to the knee. Basically destroy your pelvis and spine. That's why you do the crumple zones. Let's not talk about it and say we did. Fair enough. Too much the rats jump from high up and they don't break anything. They also weigh like eight ounces. We had one patient in the ER who jumped legs first, so they lived, right? They at least lived long enough to make it to the ER. See, I'm not that crazy. The strategy isn't that crazy. It's all about dissipating force. Gotta learn to roll. Yeah, he died, but he, he lived long enough to make it there. Something to think about. I don't know if you know this, but YouTube's recommendation system doesn't account for live streams when a select channel is pushed new viewers. I do know that, Bite Bunny. There is absolutely zero discoverability on YouTube. But we are currently also live on Twitch. But yeah, YouTube and live streaming don't really go together. And they're not particularly interested in making it work either. They're, uh, they're way more focused on shorts than live streams. Drekman... Save pre on Vel's heart or concentrated version? That is an interesting question. That's a very interesting question. Uh, probably. Hmm. You'd have to look them both up and see which one is sold most recently. I think probably the concentrated magic, if you're willing to buy the alchemy stones and melt them into the magical shards. Not magical shards. The, uh, whatever they're called. Alchemy stone shards. But you probably get the magic faster from the people that go to Vel and still have it and they just sell theirs. Does that make sense? Do you think PA will add more dungeons and raids? They have had plans for a fourth dungeon for like many years at this point. 
but given the lack of popularity of the dungeons due to the way that they designed them to be weekly lockouts, which is the worst thing in history, and they please PA stop doing that, I don't think that they plan to add more after that. I think they'll probably finish the fourth that they planned, and then that'll be it. Due to the lack of popularity in Korea. You have to think of this game as a single player game because Koreans like it that way. They like it to be a single player grinder and that's what they build the game for. They don't build it for the rest of the world, they build it for Korea. I don't know, like, expansion will be the final for sure. I don't know if it'll be the final expansion. I feel like they are just going to keep adding random things to milk their player base for money. And just dump random stuff. It might be the last meaningful expansion, but I don't know. It honestly baffles me that they aren't trying to charge for expansions now. And I think the only reason they aren't is because they can't figure out how to code areas that are like locked out. Or grind spots that are locked out. To like people that have the expansion versus don't. I was thinking, but seems like the Vel's heart sells more frequently. Uh, do you have Garmoth? Like the premium Garmoth? Because I think you can look, right? On Garmoth? I feel like you can look. I'm not sure on that, but I feel like you can look. Sound like Beto is dying? Well, BDO isn't growing, which uh, in a way means that it's dying, right? The BDO player base, from the metrics that we have, have been very, very consistently the same over the last several years. So it's not growing, and that's not a that's not a good metric. That's not a good place to be. I'm trying to push it in other countries recently, and it's trying to show percentages. I don't know how well it worked for them though. Gambling is a gray area. Gambling is like illegal in a lot of countries. Even if you show the percentage, it's just like illegal in a lot of places. But the problem, here's the problem with that, is that they're trying to push it out to more countries. They're not trying to make their game better. There's the problem. They're not trying to make more people want to play the game. They're just trying to push it to the... To the people that can't currently play the game so some of them may want to you know what i mean that's not good Wish we could grind solo slots as a party. Remember people, and that's probably increases its stats. It'll be hard to balance, but there's literally no option. Here's the thing though, Seth. While the majority of like everyone except Korea would agree with you, that's a problem. Korea would not agree with you, and therefore it'll never happen. Because the worst thing about this game is that it's owned by Pearl Dis. And that is why we don't have the actual potential that this game could have, and we instead have what we have. I think new players are more vulnerable to cash shops than veterans are. Right, but the, the point is, is that they're not trying to get new players in the regions that they are currently active in by making their game better. That's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to get access to regions that do not have access. Which is a resource that is limited. But making your game better so that more people play it, you would think would be a smarter strategy for like future-proofing, but that's not what they're doing. They're, they're just trying to get their game out in every region they can 
milk every region they can for as much money as they'll give them. And then I I assume just stop supporting the game or move on to something else would be my assumption, but I don't know. And you make best looking MMO, makes so you spend hundreds of hours alone or a single player. That's not even like the biggest problem with this game either, right? It's that you spend hundreds of hours alone, and then after spending hundreds of hours alone, there's literally, literally, not a single thing to do. Nothing. And they are very, very aggressive with monetization, which is not a positive thing. This is basically a mobile game, but with better graphics. It's not going to start playing video. It's just one of those things, you know, it's like super grindy. There's nothing to do at endgame. And that's just that's just being real with you. There's a lot of catch up mechanics and stuff. But if this right here isn't the thing that you want to do, then the game's not for you. And I'm sorry to say, because this is what the game is going in circles for hundreds of hours. That's the game. Videos region locked in India. Don't know if it's regulations or they think India isn't market for them. Yeah, I don't know. But here's the thing. Launching in India isn't going to save them. It'll make them more money for a limited time. Not going to save them. Looks fun if it's with more people. The only thing that you do with people in this game is node wars, which happens once a day at a set time or a set period of time. And you have to like get in a guild that will actively participate. If your guild just chooses not to participate for a day, then you don't get to basically. Um, then there's RBF, which you can queue up and just fight a bunch of people. And that's that's it. You could, like, get into a dungeon group, I guess, but that's, again, once a week. Because there's a lockout on that. So you get to do it once a week. So I guess, I guess, log in once a week. Night's sick. Work tomorrow. All right, Zephyr. Have a good night. Appreciate you stopping in. There are some duo and trio grind spots, but you need like hundreds of hours of gear to even start them. And then they're not popular enough for for people to be interested. Like abandoned monastery, you need like, I don't know, probably 300 hours worth of gear if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, a lot more. And then the only spot that people actually do, but it's still hard to find groups for is Olin's and you need like 500 hours of gear, 600 hours of gear, if you know what you're doing and more if you don't. So, and even then it's still hard to find groups for that. It's just not like it's, it says it's an MMO, but it's, it's really not an MMO. It's a single player basically that has other people sometimes running around in it. Can you fix a game first? Yeah, the biggest problem with the game is that Pearl Abyss owns it and they're making it for Korea, who is very single player centric. If the game was owned by another company, then it would be pushed back into an MMO. It would be an MMO again. But it hasn't been an MMO for a long time, I would say. Owns is the only spot. Yeah, basically. I don't think it's possible. It's definitely possible to fix the game. 
It's just that that's not something that they're interested in. Because that's not what Korea wants. Korea wants it to be a single player, basically. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I'm going to check Throne of Liberty and Blade and Soul Neo. Should eventually fail, but it will be fun for a couple months before I go back to video. Yeah, that's the whole point. Like, that's that's something that we lose touch of as gamers. We are here to have a good time. And BDO, while it can be a good time, I feel like the majority of the player base in BDO just plays BDO because they don't want to fall behind. And it's not because they're enjoying it. Which is a big problem. But at the end of the day, we're here to have a good time. Go have a good time doing something that you want to do. And when you're ready to come back, you come back and have a good time for a bit. And it's not like you're going to fall so far behind you'll be irrelevant, right? Because you know how gear and video works. But you only got so much life, man. You gotta enjoy it while you can. No sense in taking on another job that you're not getting paid for. Listen to you is a good time, not gonna lie. Is it like my voice or something that you guys like? I don't know. I get a lot of compliments on my voice, but I don't hear what you guys hear, I guess. I just talk normally. I don't know. It's awesome, so it's five man group farm spot. Escalating PvP was the best time. Yep. And it hasn't been like that in what? Five years? Six years? So. Very radiophonic voice. You're telling me I have a face for radio? I know you haven't seen my face, but if I have a face for radio, that's good. <laughs> what if I do a face reveal and you guys are like, yeah, you just, you have a face for radio, turn it off. That'd be funny. I think it's just you talking very chill. That's, that's my whole life. This is just me talking normally. I know it sounds chill. It's just that, like, that's just me. I'm like fairly monotone, I guess. Seclude chill content creator and radio host. Can listen to me while you're in your car. It's really chill and you don't over exaggerate anything. Really easy to listen to while doing whatever. By by over exaggerate, do you mean like the YouTuber voice that people do? Because I've seen some of that before. I don't know, like. Here's the thing, is like, you're people, and I am people. We're, we're all humans, I could just talk to you like you're a person. And not like I'm trying to sell you something. Or hype you up for something, I don't know. The voice of BDO. I think I think Choice is the voice of BDO, isn't he? He's the uh, he's the BDO streamer or whatever. He's got some hot takes, man. Especially recently. I don't know, man. That's why we're here. Sick loot treating us kindly. Do you guys do you guys just like not get treated like people? Because you, you are people. That's a little bit weird. Never watched Choice? Only you? Sometimes Blue. Oh, I see. Interesting. I, uh, I listen to a lot of Choice's VODs while I'm at work. I can't actually watch, but I do listen. Just kind of like keep updated on things. And he's got some very interesting takes with the monetization of the game. I don't know, man. I don't agree. Oh, 
Watch Blue Dragon reacting to Pistanity. I don't really, like, get a chance to watch anyone anymore. Which is interesting. I haven't really watched Blue since he was doing the, like, T1 VOD review thing. That was the blue era that I enjoyed. He also has some interesting takes. But people are people are people, you know what I mean? They all have different opinions and stuff. To be fair, there isn't a lot of content in this game to watch anyway. That's because there's nothing to do in the game. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> It's not that nobody's making content for it, it's just that there's literally nothing to do. You just go in circles, man. Welcome to the game. Circle Simulator. I need to do the video by Anders. Wait, Anders did a video? Or was it just like on a watch next from an Anders vid? They just make all life skills active instead of AFK. I think even in that case, there's still nothing to do with the life skills, right? Because what do you do with life skills? You rank up your level by going in circles? And then what? came up with ultimate challenge that was peak video content here's the interesting thing about that seth is that it's my least viewed content on youtube my three ultimate challenge videos are the least viewed videos that i have So the voice is important. That's a little bit... I think anyone could do YouTube. I don't think that you have to have a good voice to do YouTube. I think, like, maybe it helps. I don't know. But... There's a lot that goes into it. It's There's way more stuff that you have to do to do this than... Like, I anticipated getting in. It, it like, so much goes into it. It's crazy. Watch next. Oh, I see. Okay. That's cool. Getting recommended, at least, to people. Everyone knows Grandma got a gear guide, crystal guide, worker emporium, or grinds. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Besides, Node Wars game is dead. Here's the thing. Node Wars is also dead. It is the same ten guilds fighting each other over and over again. And the only reason that they do fight each other is because they all talk to each other beforehand and drop on the same node. Node Wars is dead as well. Game mode with it. What they need to do is they just need to go into RuneScape and just start ripping off game modes from RuneScape and put them in video. Because that at least would improve their game immediately. Did you enjoy Dragon's Dogma 2? I really did, yeah. Probably game of the year for me. Really enjoy it. I played like a lot of it off stream as well and off recording and got to like level 67 or something and maxed like all the vocations and stuff like that. We're on New Game Plus. Really good game. I like it a lot. I think maybe trying to do some sort of challenge series in it would be fun, but I'm not sure what that challenge series would be, or if there'd be interest in it. It's a little bit hard to branch out, especially on YouTube, when you've, like, established an audience for one thing. It's like starting over again, basically. No more time gated stuff? That's the big problem. It's all the time gates. Team, like hunting or something. 
The sad part is that they're never going to do any of that. They'll just make more solo stuff. It's showbiz. The game is the face, the voice of the soul. Oh, I see. Lord War is literally just politics. He's like three or four guilds who are fighting. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't politic right to get in on it, then if you drop, you get zerged so that they can have whatever fight they want and you're just not included. It's, it's, yeah, it's dead. How's Ultimate Challenge series? Is at bottom? I was look forward to Delete Me Daddy's Adventures. Yeah, I don't know. But it's, uh, it's the least seed stuff I have, so. Which is fine. I'm still, like, enjoying it. And I think once we get to focus on it full time or whatever, it'll be, uh, something that picks up a little bit, but. That's right. It's not all about the views. We do it for fun as well. Hello there. Noob Sunny just followed. Sunny, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Let's just get it focus hard by them before I Yeah, exactly. Right? So you can't even drop without politicking or you just get you just get deleted off the node by all of them. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Recommend your channel through your Iron Man challenge. So far, 18 down. Sometimes I feel lost with the story challenge. Felt I missed some important parts. Led me to missing the journey. Like skipping up to. Here's the thing, Bite Bunny. I get what you're saying, and the reason that that happens is because episode one of my Iron Man was the first video I'd ever made in my life, and I'm not good at it. I'm working on it. I'm trying to improve. It's a big, big, huge, massive learning curve. But uh, I was pretty terrible. I'm still pretty terrible. I'm trying to get better. Morning, Yurito. Maybe KR, MMO, just following the story path. Solo instead of group stuff. Yep. So that's what they want, right? So KR likes or something? I don't know. Same circle jerking since beginning. Node whirl. Node war. World vs. World PvP and Bayok, Warhammer, Guild Wars 2, New World, yeah. It used to be a lot more organic. It used to be like you had no idea who dropped on the node, but there was enough guilds interested because it was actually worth doing that it just became like a huge fight. Just people everywhere. It's great. It's all about the narrative. We're definitely working on it. I'm like focusing more on like pacing and stuff now. Trying to actually put a story together. But in the early stages, it was all, all about just like cutting the clips together in sequential order, which sort of worked. But because the way that you play the game is all over the place, it made the story all over the place. And I'm working on fixing that as we go especially with the new series the way that we play the new series is going to be a lot different it'll be a lot more like one thing at a time instead of everything at once so that it'll be easier to like create stories out of it but i'm like very new to creation i, I don't consider myself a creative person but i'm working on establishing that part of my brain so that i can be But uh, it's all just a big learning curve. There's a lot that goes into it. There's there's like a million things to learn. Hey Frank, how's it going?
Nuver. Need assistance on that, I can assist you with it. I'm definitely working on it. We're improving. Trying to improve anyway. And then you also have to learn like all the editing and and everything else like there's just so much that goes into it It's really an under an underestimated field I'm one of those people that thought that like doing this was pretty easy But there is a huge amount of things that go into it. So About the voice thing, so I'll mention, check out Madsy's season show. You guys, the same vibe. I've been compared to him like a lot, and I went and watched one of his videos, and I don't see it at all. Like, I don't understand it. But, you know, I guess the important part is that you like it. I don't know. It's like easier to build off of something that you like than it is to like fix a voice that you hate. You know what I mean? Protection, brand building, narrative, story, content, feedback, improvement. Yeah, and then it's all like the complexities of editing and thumbnail making, Photoshop, After Effects. It's like there's so much. Sixteen seconds. It's kind of so much more rewarding. I'll click it. It's a lot of fun as well. Like doing this and then the ultimate is just fun. Not video, but content creation. Hmm. Uh, we're done. What do we got? Seventeen and a half K. Not too bad. I think I had 16 Kafras, so we got like 80 something. That's not bad. Okay, let me run to the restroom and then we'll get going on another hour. Then we'll probably be able to hit C6 Ergons, I think. We'll go from there, but uh, I'll be right back. Give me just a minute. Oh gosh, you guys were looking at that the whole time? That's creepy. Two. We gotta hurry up. 
so we can still use our buff. Oh, I didn't even pop a temp buff. We're gonna run out though. I gotta, I gotta burn this, and then we'll go. Okay. Now we go. Bought a little bit of time there. Easy butcher. We're also at 40% of the level. So crazy. Good soup and guy. Okay, we'll probably play some Mewa today. I don't know how the reroll thing is going to go. Technically, I guess today should have been reroll day, but we barely played Mewa. So, I don't know. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. The, uh, the decision on that has been pretty split as far as the community is concerned, so... I'm a little bit undecided. How many pets do you have on this account? That is a good question. I have a tier one, a tier three, a tier two, a tier three, and a tier three. So basically two tier ones and three tier threes. As far as loot speed is concerned. You know, it's kind of boring. Like, it's pretty lackluster and suck literally sucks life out of you. I like the look of Succession, but it's like the same couple skills over and over. And then we tried Awakening for a bit, and it just like did no damage. It felt like zero damage, so. I don't dislike Mewa, but it doesn't doesn't pull me in or anything. Pretty neutral about it. I see you play Awakening Nova or Awakening Megu. I've played Succession Megu before, but never Awakening. And I've never played Nova. I like in Hammer Girl. I pretty I like it a fair bit. I would say it's top five classes for me, pretty comfortably. It's decent. It's pretty well rounded. It can do really any form of PVE. So looks flashy. Yeah, it's supposed to be like gold dust or something that she's sending out. Looks kind of like sand, though. Okay, back to work. See you later. May our Jesus bless you. Alright, bye, bunny. Appreciate you stopping in. Hanging out. We'll catch you next time. Have a good day at work. Second skill you're doing, two balls go around. That's a Rabomb. Um, the first one is also a Rabomb. But let me... 
me hover it for you. It's called whatever that is because it's being blocked. Shift X, Gravity Crush. It's called Gravity Crush. on the right okay there's no real reason that I use gravity crush except that while the mobs are waking up, they take less damage, so I just do two rebombs to wake them up, and then I start my combo. Where are you farming? This is Underground Gyphon. Isn't it for a party? Upper Gyphon is for a party. Underground Gyphon is not. This is the, the lower Gyphon. Which requires a lot more gear than Upper Gyphon. And this is Upper Gyphon over here. This 290. This one is the... No, this is Upper Gyphon. This is Lower Gyphon. Temple Underground. Temple. They're different, different places. There goes definitely top five for me too. Farmed really well at Isarid. Stop dying a bunch of birds too. That's after her buffs, right? We ended up rolling to Scholar before she got any buffs at all. And it took like five weeks for her to get buffs. She was pretty terrible before. She also used to buff the mobs that you would attack with DP. Give them like plus 40 DP or whatever it was. It's a good time. That's hilarious. Guess, you know what's still happening is uh, Scholar buffs mobs with jump height. You can up jump height on them. See that right there plus jump height i'm buffing them with jump height it's still a problem still giving them buffs nice one pa yeah What are you gonna do? This saw this OP one was Megu at release. Yeah, and Megu's still like incredibly strong, right? Drop rate buff the mobs, that would be a good bug. Plus a thousand percent drop rate. Imagine. Showing PBX overall, two for play styles, like yeah. 
Even back when it was just succession, it was like super broken. And then it got a tiny little nerf and everybody rolled off of it and it was still like really, really broken. It's really funny. I'm thinking on switching to Awakening Megu. I've never actually played Awakening Megu. It wasn't out when I played Megu. But it's been receiving some work lately because it wasn't very good. But I think it's uh, pretty underrated now. Purple. So kind of broken right now. Spirit Forge State. It's supposed to use to be your passive. It's not explained in any way. It's definitely not beginner friendly. Yeah, that's fair. Change to dark purple when you're spirit forward, so it's easy for me. Super flashing fast. Hmm. I don't have a GS command, it's uh, exclamation gear. If you'd like to see the, the Iron Man gear, should probably throw in a GS command. I think you're the second person ever to do that, though. So, I don't know. Load this guy, Finretto. It's my second favorite. Personally. Maybe third favorite. Could be third favorite. Locomori. Like super huge open room right next to you, room with the pit. Yeah, that's probably my either second or third. My favorite one is actually the small one next to the vendor or the uh, the node manager. It's a really tiny one. It's my favorite room. I like how small it is. Come so far? We have indeed. We're almost done, actually. Need uh, 11,500 Kafras, and then we just have to hit a duo of Labresca, and we're done. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Cranking out the Kafras. Should hit uh, C6 Ergons today. How much trash so far on the grind here? I have no idea. I don't track it. Couldn't tell you at all. Don't even have a guess, to be honest. Say so tracking trash because I see anything lower than 30k. My cry. Well, my average is like like 17k on a on a blue. 
And that's good enough for me. Money is like almost meaningless. Money just goes for crons or duo fallen god attempts, and that's it. And that'll uh, that'll come in time, you know. But I get uh, probably around 70 Kaffers an hour, sometimes 80. That's all I really care about. I have to go do some thornwood after this. Get some more fangs. Those fangs that we did were crazy good. I think we got like 500 Kafras from those scrolls. GS7. Seven giz. Right here. Thanks, five man. Yeah, we did a. I think it was a four man. It's hard to find groups, so I've been looking for a group for a while. And uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it was good Kafras, but. It's so hard to get a group together. Hey, Jomi, it's going pretty good. Just cranking out the Kaffirs. This is our life now, basically. Kaffir grinding. We're getting there, though. We're chipping away at it. How many do you still need? Uh, 11,000 something or other in the title. Let me look. 11,529. But I haven't counted any of the last, like, hours, so... Marginally less than that, I would say. Probably 11,400. Didn't see the title? Yeah, it's all good. I just know how to fix monster attacking area, red thingy. Keep disappearing, even though still attack motion. Like the uh, like the red circle on the ground is disappearing. That's weird. It shouldn't. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know. I've never had that problem before. I don't really look at the ground though, so I guess I could have been having that problem, it's just not noticed. Might be tied to graphic settings. I'm not sure. Do you play on remastered? You do. Interesting. My red circles stick around until like well after. So I don't know. Hello, Eden. How's it going? Hopefully you're doing well. Another freaking crocodile stone. I don't need those. I'm going to play BDO in a few weeks. Got tired of getting lucky or just not feeling it? It's good to take, take breaks when you're not feeling it, man. Definitely a good thing. Burnt out, waiting on Garmoth Heart Predator. Then start grinding again. That could take a while. That could take quite a while. Might be the grind spot. Olins have a weird bug where the red just disappears and it one shots you. Could be. I don't think that there's anything that like you could do to influence that. Because it's not like something that you could turn off. So I don't I don't think it would be on your side. Still need to go to crypt. Good luck with that. Should be fun. Should go to Night Vendor to get Kaffir bundles. I do. I went to Night Vendor today, in fact, and I spent, I don't know, like 3,000 energy and I got 16 Kaffirs. Probably wasn't 3,000, it was maybe 2,000 energy. Hey, Robin. How's it going? That's a steal, yeah. A gear screw, yeah, like 688 or 689. Somewhere in there. Almost there, yeah. 11,000 or so Kafras and a duo Labresca, and we're, we're done. That's a steal, 2,000 energy for 16 Kafras. Felt, it felt like a waste of time in the moment. But, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. You need more Kafras to make the stones too? I have like six stones. It's not it's not a lot of Kafras to make the stones. We're crowning duo, so... Ten each, not bad. Yeah. I think we have five or six left still, so... Not too worried about it. We're clicking on a pretty high stack, so we have a 16% chance. Zero for
Is there an XP event going? 500% XP? Jeez. Took me 3,000 memes to get all three of my armors to duo. Oof. I've got about 200 memes. And ideally, I don't have to grind anymore. Can I raw tap them to try? Ah, oh, jeez. Spend another, like, 3,000 memory fragments. How much Kafra's left? 11,529. Probably less than that here in a minute. I'll, like, after this hour's done, I'll, I'll recalculate. To me, 120 tries to get my Goddard a pen. Now they're bringing a petty system. Yeah, should have waited, man. 2018 called. They want to move on back. It's not even like crazy either. It's like double the average, which is like weird. I thought it'd be like triple at least. But what are you going to do? Where's purple at? In the middle. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Got knocked out of it. Don't grab neck. How's this class? Do you like it? I do like it. It's pretty solid at grinding. It's not like breaking records, but it's pretty solid. It used to be like not good, but you know, such is the nature of balancing in the game. It's pretty well rounded as well, so really can't go wrong with it. Should pen Devo neck. Only failed one time at pry. Jeez. Talk about getting carried, man. The heck? Feel like you're ready to be done with this Iron Man and move on? Or are you still enjoying it? Uh, hmm. I... It doesn't really feel like an Iron Man anymore. Because all we're doing is grinding now. Or gear. So it feels like a normal account, but slower. Right? Because that's all we're doing. We're just on the gear treadmill again, which is the reason I started the Iron Man in the first place. Was to get away from the gear treadmill. But we're right back on it now. Just going in the same circle for hundreds of hours to get the gear that we need. So, I'm ready to move to the ultimate, where it will feel like an Iron Man again. Still faster than my grind though. Yeah, I grind a lot. I actually don't even grind that much anymore. I've really slowed down. I've been uh my free time instead of going to grinding now has been going to like learning to get better at YouTube stuff, like video making. 
and um, trying to spend more time with family and stuff. And the last like seven months I've been doing this, 100% of my free time has gone to it. So I'm trying to pull away a little bit and actually like have life. You know what I mean? Spend time with people that have been putting up with me, like ghosting them essentially for the last eight months. Because the catch-up thing in BDO makes people quit faster. It's because, like, they get to the endgame faster and they realize that there's literally nothing there. So that's why. That's what's happening. There's, there's absolutely nothing to do with your gear, so, like, what's the point, you know? Does your family think about the new YouTube Twitch adventure? Well, I don't have like much of a family. Um, it's quite small, but they don't uh, like, aside from my girlfriend, they don't really see how much time I spend on it. They don't really understand that. But I spend like a like I spend more than my full time job amount of time on this every single week. And you add the two together and it means like I don't have time for anything else, basically. But I enjoy doing it. I would like it to be the only thing that I can do so I could spend more time on it and still be able to do the things that I should be doing but you know such is the nature of uh, trying to build like a community and an audience and stuff it takes time imagine having life just headbutt into mobs <laughs> I've been doing that the last eight years man you gotta you gotta have a life sometimes Eventually, TM, yeah. One day. Hundred and sixty nine Kafras so far. That's definitely C six boots. Imagine what you're doing now through streaming, but instead People grinding with you. Imagine, okay, let's let's take a another step back from that, Avengi. Imagine not grinding, but imagine going and do, doing something fun with those people. Imagine there was like game modes that were interesting. Imagine that grinding wasn't literally the only thing to do in the game. Imagine. Tell work felt for the first few years when you were understaffed. Just no life and a speed run. Yeah. It's decent. I'm just happy when I see 100 Kafras. That's after like two hours, so don't quite get 100 an hour. But hey, it's some Kafras. We're chipping away at the number. Slow down there. <laughs> Am I asking too much? Something fun to do in the game that's designed to have fun? Is that crazy? Am I being crazy?
No fun allowed in my game. I see how it is. No way game design to be fun in 2024. You know, Dragon's Dogma 2 came out in 2024 and that was quite fun. Where it doesn't suit your playstyle, or rather our playstyle. It is unfortunate. But it kind of like... It definitely does suit my playstyle. Because that's the reason that we're doing the Iron Man in the first place. Is to try and create fun. Trying again, see enhancing that has me thinking maybe it's wrong. Yeah, you just buy everything, honestly. You can buy everything they need from the market. I don't recommend enhancing at all. Do you like open world survival type games? Uh generally I don't like survivals. But I would I would say that that's because let me let me have some real talk with you guys. Let me let me open up a little bit here. I have played exclusively BDO for the last eight years. I am a very sheltered gamer. BDO is my first MMO. BDO is also my first PC game. I was a console player before that, like PlayStation Two console player. I'm very sheltered as a human being. So I don't necessarily like open world survival games, mostly because I don't play any of them. I played Power World for a bit and had fun with that. I think that was cool. Um, but it like reaches a wall pretty fast. But I don't have much experience with, uh, with other games, right? Basically, you created a fun game mode. Yeah. Because after eight years of PA just not bothering, I figured I'd do it myself. And here we are. You know, it's fun if you're spending as much time as something like Dragon Dog 2 and Elden Ring. We played kind of a lot of Dragon Sogma. I kind of want to do some sort of challenge series on Dragon Sogma as well. That's how much fun I had with it. I saw a guy doing a fist only run and that was really interesting. So we might uh, think up a challenge to do on Dragon Sogma and, and do something like that as well. But there's other games I want to play too. Like we're doing Elden Ring now and then I want to do Baldur's Gate and stuff like that. Do it on Elden Ring? I'm really not good at those games though, is the thing. I don't have skills. That's my problem. Time for gaming therapy. We are branching out on uh, at least Sundays, but sometimes more than Sundays. We're playing other things, right? So. It's a great game. BDO. Power World. It's fun. Dragon Time 2, Elden Ring. Yeah. Yep, yeah, been branching out a bit. We're going to keep doing that as well. That's a nice little break from BDO and also something else to do, something else to to go with. I'll doing randomizer in the future. I was thinking about doing a randomizer for my first playthrough, but then again, it was like the first playthrough, so it didn't really make sense. So we are currently playing through it non-randomized, but I'm not going to say no to a randomizer. I think it's really cool. And maybe we'll do, maybe we'll revisit in the future and do some sort of like challenge on it with a randomizer. That ring is kind of like BDO, but with better pings. It's less grindy though. And more, it's more like get good and less like 
grind a thousand hours for gear and levels. You can turn it into a straight random dungeon crawl if you want. I think I saw something like that where there was no open world. It was just all the dungeons linked together. That was kind of cool. Playtime video is equal to completing 100 plus games total time. Yeah. Does seem that way, yeah. What's CLC for Elden Ring? I have no idea. I haven't been tracking it. I'm sure somebody knows. June 20th, there it is. It's a fog gate randomizer. Elden Ring Platinum. <laughs> How long are you planning to continue today? For a few more hours at least. We just started uh, like two hours ago, so we got we got a fair bit yet. Warframe. Um, I don't know if I have an opinion about Warframe. I think I've tried to play it before, but didn't get very far. Just don't. Don't have an opinion about Warframe. Or don't don't play Warframe. I saw a TikTok about Warframe recently. I don't know why, because like I've never looked at that stuff. But uh, there was a guy talking about a website that you could just buy <laughs> buy Warframes for super cheap, and I was like, what the heck? So that seems a little bit TOS to me, but okay. Try the first Dragon Sogma. I've played the first Dragon Sogma a fair bit. That's why I was so excited about the second one. I'd played Dark Risen for a while. They have a site like the CM BDO. It's really cool. I feel it feels a little bit TOS, right? Because they're they're like selling things for platinum, and that would mean that the the publisher isn't getting the money. It's like player trading. I don't know if that's against TOS, but like, it seems a little sketch. Selling game, just listing in game. But there's a there's a website where you can get like the primes for like fifty platinum or something. Warframe story is amazing. Gameplay is polished. And you can do co-op stuff. It's huge, but Warframe is grindy, not like BDO though. Grindier. Warframe is grindier than BDO. Is it grindier than uh, RuneScape?
so it's from true chat. Oh, I see. Okay. By all primes for platinum interesting we might look into it at some point there's definitely a lot of games that i want to play for sure uh I'm doing elden ring now and then baldur's gate is on the list and the final fantasy 7 remake and rebirth are on the list and some other stuff as well but maybe i'll make a I think there is a channel in Discord with like other game interests, but maybe I'll make one with like suggestions. You guys can put the suggestions of other games and which ones you'd be most interested in seeing and stuff like that. Maybe we'll just run a vote on it when I'm getting close to the end of uh, one of the current games we're working on and then we swap it for whatever's most voted on or something. And close my opinion, but Warframe has time gated it on builds that can be rushed with platinum. So it's pay to win, is what you're saying. Kind of funny, I complete my history of grinding in five hours. Mine was done in like less than an hour, so like, uh, <laughs> I hear you, man. But I don't have two compasses, to be fair. I've only got the one. Spend your repertoire so I don't have to play those games. Oh, I see. Well, every Sunday we're gonna be doing something else, so it'll be it'll be like side game Sunday. We'll be playing whatever our side game is. Currently, it's Elden Ring. So I think though that I'm probably not gonna stream to YouTube on those days, and we will instead stream just to Twitch. And then I will make videos on them to put on YouTube because I think that that's going to work better than live streaming and doing the videos. Since variety more frame, though it's somewhat grindy, I'd say, and easier to play. I have to grind a circle for hours to make progress. Interesting. Hmm. But I have two, yeah. Yeah. There's a thing plaque can be earned in game. Grind for stuff to trade. Or you could just buy it and then pay to win, right? Or like pay to skip, that's still pay to win. Pay to skip is still pay to win. Guess I'll have to go to Twitch. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, but it just doesn't work as well when you stream all of the content for something and then also try to make videos out of it on YouTube. It means that neither does as well. So if you want to see it live, you'll have to join us on Twitch on Sundays. Otherwise, they will be made into videos shortly after that, probably like the following week. So, and we'll, we'll run with that for a little bit. I think you can do some fun challenge stuff on Baldur's Gate 3. I want to play through it normally first. I have like no experience with that type of game. The uh, CRPG or whatever it's called. I have next to no experience with that style of game. So we'll play through it normally first, probably. Say pay to win. But are you winning, though? It doesn't matter if you're winning or not. You're paying for accelerated progression. And that is by nature pay to win. You could you could pay to win a BDO. 
and get 750 gear score and get absolutely thrashed by a 650 gear score that's just good at PvP, that doesn't mean that you didn't pay to win. You know what I mean? What you do with it after you've paid to win doesn't mean it's not pay to win. When you succeed, so I'll go to Twitch. Fair enough. If you're really against it, like, it's it's totally fine if you don't like Twitch. They will be, like, on YouTube. Kind of like what we're doing with uh, Dragon's Dogma. I got a really late start on Dragon's Dogma, but that is the plan for our side games is to, is to kind of, like, post them as videos. You're like in Scholar for grinding Gyphon or Giants. Scholar is very, very well rounded as a class, so it can grind anywhere. Um, and it's decent. It's not like breaking any records, but it's very solid at grinding. Pretty comfy. Has a lot of HP regen, so if you have low DP, then it can make up for some of that deficit. Suggestion for Giants is Guardian. Pretty high mob kill count and high trash. High is 40k. There are classes that can do better than that, but not more comfortably, right? But at the end of the day, you should just play what you like. Even if it's bad. Because a bad class that you like playing will give you more progress than a good class that you don't like playing. Now that I think of it, how are you reading chat and grinding? I mean, don't you need to see what you're doing? I don't look at my screen that often, to be honest with you. It's just a skill that you learn. You just learn to not look at, at your screen. I just play Ranger. Ranger seems like such a good class. I'm pretty excited to get into the next challenge and really uh, experiment with Ranger and, and figure it out. You say ranger? I'm out. Yeah, ranger. Rat ranger. We're going to see how the other half lives. You know what I mean? Got to see if the grass is greener on the other side. He being picked on by 280 AP Rangers one tapping me. <laughs> Got to see how the other half lives, man. Be like Irish, just re-roll. The thing is, is like I can't actually re-roll without totally making new weapons. So it's gonna be quite an investment to decide to do that. Especially if we ever get to Black Stars. Because remnants of the rift take really, really long to get.
Almost died right there, holy. And says she's a bad grinder, but I just enjoy it. I don't think that she is though, right? Ranger does pretty solid, like Awakening Ranger does pretty solid endgame. Like top 10 endgame. And then Succession Ranger does like top 10 early game, so... I think people are just wrong. There's no bad grinder. Suck Nova? Yeah, that's fair. Suck Nova needs like a fundamental rework though. Another butcher. In your opinion was top five end game PVE grinders. The the top the top grinder in the game is the one that you like playing the most. Because then you will grind more. And more grinding on a on a bad class will always beat less grinding on a good class. 100 percent of the time. But it's uh it's probably like Awakening Nova, Succession Witch, Awakening Witch, Succession Lawn. Stuff like that. All the conventionally broken things are conventionally broken. Wusa, all that. Still really, really good. But it's not really an opinion, though. It's just like scientifically backed by the fact that they're doing better at places than other classes, right? It's not, like, an opinion. Can you send the gear to you at the moment? Doing Giants for Despairs. It's good. Hey, that's not bad. Are there not like a thousand of despairs just sitting on the market at minimum price though? How about a new rule for your ultimate challenge? Not skipping the quests? That doesn't make it more challenging though, that just makes it less fun. There's a there's a fine line between challenge that's fun and challenge that's just like not fun, you know what I mean? And I don't think that there's a single person that enjoys questing, so I just are spam through all of it. Carrying too much weight. minutes left here Dan if you grind more you progress more classes really matter much exactly more grinding is more gooder reading it all yeah not for me man I'm sure someone out there will do that not me Can I farm 200 by 100? Yeah, fair enough. Giants, I think, is a decent spot still, but Despairs have tanked pretty pretty good, so... What do you mean I do? Although Rare Breed? Yeah, you're, you're one in a billion. You and Lorekeeper Mira, or whatever, whatever her name is. Those are the two people that like quests in this game. Want to actually know the lore of BDO? If there's any, there are people that will explain it to you. I think Lorekeeper Mira, I want to say, is what the channel's called. That's a good place to go if you just want videos on what the lore is. 
stuff like that. How far from the end game? What do you consider the end game? Or are you just asking how far from the end of the challenge? Because the challenge ends at 700. You know at least the basics of the things she's talking about to understand? I don't know. I've not watched any of her videos because I'm, I'm not interested in the lore at all. Oh, there's our hour done, actually. Okay. Two hours, 226 Caffers, 279 Dust. Not bad. Not bad at all. Do you Fallen God, Pen Boss, C20 Kudum, Pen Accessories, probably? And Blackstar? Uh, I'm never going to get there. That's how far away we are. Because that is not the goal of my challenge. So, I will never get there. I have no interest in that. Our goal is 700, and we are like 11,500 Kaffirs away. And then that's it. We're going to abandon the count after that. Move on to something else. I just have no interest in the gear treadmill of this game. So. Take my leave for now. Catch you later. All right, Seth. Appreciate you stopping in. Got her a Nova video without understanding Calfion Odi story. We are gonna understand it. Does she not have like a Calfion slash Odalita story though? Does she not have everything you need? All the stuff. Irish, that is a bigger word than I could like have the mental capacity to work out. I've been playing the Crayon Eater game for eight years, man. My my mental capacity is like not that high anymore. a joke i don't i can't read the word man should i get duo godder or stick with the tet and tell pen can i have 245 house tech already if you plan on enhancing your own black star i wouldn't bother with the godder i would just keep what you have it sounds like you're you're planning on enhancing it so I would just stick with the tet until you hit pen. Do you have a house like in game? Yes, I have a couple of houses in game. One job done, off to clean windows. <laughs> Alright, town. Have a good time. Did you decorate it? You have to like make decorations or purchase decorations. But it is slightly decorated. I could take you there if you'd like. Yeah. 
You see you. Is this you right here? The Robins. Hello. MTV Cribs, okay. Let's hit these C6 Aragons real quick, though. Bam. 979 until C7. 403 DP. Huge. Huge. We're 689 gear score. Not bad at all. Get on the horse, lady. Get on the horse. There's a slight ledge, so she can't get on the horse. Oh, I forgot to turn in my dailies as well. Gosh dang it. We'll explore the house, I guess, and then we'll turn in the dailies. Google Doc with entire timeline of BDO lore so far on BDO subreddit. People just have way too much time on their hands. MTV Cribs right here. We have lamps from my first ever farming experience. We have this whale poster that could have been something good but wasn't. And then we have paintings from that one's Odraxia, I think. And that one is Camasylvia or something. And then this thing. I don't even know what this is for. Where are those lamps from? I uh, I did some farming when I when I first put my farms down. I just bought like a random seed from the vendor, and uh, it turns out they were just these lamps. The whale is nice. The whale is expensive. This thing is so expensive. Where's the collect thing? Let's, let's see. This is 500 million silver on the market. And it gives you a hundred sailing mastery for four hours. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not want the whale. I don't even remember what seed it was. Let me go look. Um... I think it was one of these, like glossy or something, shiny maybe. I just bought these, I thought they'd be like random seeds. I just planted them all, they were not random, they were all lamps. Every single one of them. We gotta go turn in the thing. So we gotta run back to Gyphon. Get our 20 Kafras.
And you grew a lamp? I grew like a hundred lamps. And I hung them all. For the memes. But they're like a flower petal lamp or something? I don't know. No items wasted. Yeah, think of all the interior points I have. The Lamp Harvester? That would be a good title. I'm sure that's not a title, though. Nope. Rip. Should contact PA, see if we can get a Lamp Harvester title. Back already? The heck? Stay for a while, taking a break before a meeting. How oh, fair enough. Forgot to turn in our uh, Kaffir daily, so we gotta go back. So we'll probably go to Thornwood for a bit on the Maywa. How many left? That's a good question. Forgot to look. <laughs> I hate this new thing. I hate that they like fade in. Hate that. They need to reverse that. Okay, let's throw these in. Then we'll do some quick maths. We'll, we'll do calculator math though. Seven six three eight plus nine five nine plus two six forty five. We need eleven thousand two hundred and forty two Caffres. Which is, uh, it's a few. It's a few Caffres. But I think I have like 10 fangs already. I hate that I, how many times I got push T? Spamming it? I'm spamming it. Okay. I think we have 10 fangs already. Yeah, so build those up again, and... Uh... Can you extract Kafras from outfits? No, you can only extract Krons or Advice of Elks. Just a few? Yeah, we're getting there. Soon it'll be zero, indeed. And depending on how lucky or unlucky we get on the Duo Labresca... I didn't put my boots back on when I ran through Gaifen. That was bad. I'm hoping we finish the Duel of Bresca before we finish the Caffres. That way I don't have to worry about it. Depends on how lucky we get or unlucky. This is the wrong way.
most high stack you can get. I have currently a 228 stack, but I'm going to be using like a 150 stack on it. Next target is Duel Bresca. Yeah, that's the last thing to enhance. The rest is purely Kafras. So we're just, uh, as I get money for crons, we're just making cron swings on it. But there's no, there's no like upper limit on the stack. You can have like a 10,000 stack probably. But actually getting to one is pretty unlikely. Just click it until you get 100%. Because there's no such thing as 100%. I can uh, I can walk you through. Okay. Let's go here. We will go Enhancing Simulator. Okay, so we did Labresca Helmet. And we'll say... This is for Duo. Okay, I have a 150 stack, which means I have a 16% chance. The highest stack I've ever seen in the game is like a 330 stack, which is a 34% chance. And that would take failing on other things so much to build that stack that it would cost you an absurd amount of money. But even with a thousand stack, it's still only a 76%. And I've never even heard of a thousand stack before. Saw an eleven eighteen stack with an eleven eighteen stack. It's only a seventy eight percent chance. All right, there is no like, there's no like guarantee. Let's try five thousand. Five thousand stack, it's ninety percent. It's just diminishing returns. This five thousand stack would cost you more money to make than anyone has ever made in the history of BDO. That's how expensive that would be to make and how unlikely it is to make that. So that's why you don't just stack it. <laughs> it's because that's not an option. Hey, 62. Nice. Still better with double shot, triple shot. Should we get any pity system next week? That'll be interesting. I've only made one click on the duo, so I'm not, I'm not super worried about it. So the challenge might make everyone bald. It's just not like realistic to do that. Even a 300 stack is pretty scary to make, so. All right, let me run to the restroom again and get another drink and then uh, we'll get going here. So give me a minute, I'll be right back.
the heck you timing me now Your second he's getting a drink second he's missing a cafra that's true that's a fair point i should get like a one of them catheter things so we never have to leave the chair we can grind forever Be 30 Kaffers. Okay, let's roll. One of these. Alright, let me see if I remember how to do this. What'd you get? The uh, weekly loot scrolls. You get three loot scrolls a week. For loyalties. Is my launch a $300 version for it? We never know. That's very expensive. You can definitely get one for less already. Get your very own gamer bucket. Not a catheter with RGB. Hey man, it's a product idea. If you're uh, if you're willing to go the steps to launch it, I'll, uh, I'll I'll become a partner in your business. I'll help you out. We can go 50-50 on it. We can just hot glue the RGB strips to the catheter and. Have a Bluetooth to your phone. Who wouldn't want that? Gamers are getting older, man. We can get uh, the grandpa gamer guy that does the battlefield sniping. We can get him to sponsor. There you go. Get him to advertise our product. The plan's coming together. You have an ambassador, yeah. The perfect ambassador. You can make good use of it. I don't know if he uses one or not, but like he's the right demographic. And people will just buy it as a collector item. Daddy long legs, perfect. Pepsi or Coke? Uh, I try to drink neither. And I do now drink like the zero calorie or zero sugar versions. And my favorite is Dr. Pepper Zero. Not Diet Dr. Pepper, but Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar or whatever it is. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to find. 
But I try not to drink any. Ideally. I usually just drink monster energy, to be honest, but <laughs> I gotta stop doing that too. That's my go-to drink. Cold milk? I've had a glass of milk since I was a, a young lad. As a young boy, that's a good song. For it over sugary drinks. Hmm. Garmoth command exclamation gear. You know, the sugar rush? I really have, like, a tolerance to sugar. Or an intolerance to sugar. I can have, like, an unlimited amount. Also, caffeine. Doesn't do anything. I think they say you should only have, like, 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. But I can have, like, a thousand and not, not notice anything. Catch you on Sunday. Yeah, we'll be live, uh... Tomorrow, the next day, and the one after that as well. But yeah, if you want some Elden Ring gameplay, we'll be jumping back in on Sunday on uh, Twitch. Yeah. Appreciate you hanging out. Yeah, we'll see you next time. I'd perish if I didn't have caffeine. That's fair. Guess tomorrow? All right, sounds good. Same with caffeine. I think I had coffee like 10 times max so far. Weird. Some people are just built different, man. I'm not one of those people. Joe with daddy long legs. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That'll be our marketing. So flashy. Some of it, yeah. When they did the remastered version of the game, they like way up the flashiness of the classes. Made everything bright, basically, yeah. Toned up the... Like, I think they went and they redid all of the effects as well. Just made them, like, way over the top. It's nice. Yeah, I don't mind looking at Mewa. I like the color of it. Especially with, like, the contrast of Odalita. It's kind of like a darker region.
Uh, those of you interested in the Dragon's Dogma series, that'll be basically daily uploads on that for a while. Except on the days that I'm uploading like a like a BDO video. So Friday it'll be BDO instead of Dragon's Dogma, but every day in between will be Dragon's Dogma. For those of you interested. I also will try to be a little bit better about not just uploading all of them. So that there's a bunch of videos that just show as members only, because I think that's just not, not fair. I don't like that you can even see them. Because they're not like a members only thing, they're scheduled. But there's a... Uh, YouTube just doesn't let me like restrict your view of them or give you any kind of like notice or word that it's like just early access for members. Think Crimson Desert will be same loot grind. Uh, it'll probably be pretty grindy, yeah. And honestly, it looks like they just ripped off BDO and started putting the BDO characters in. So I don't know. It'll probably be grindy though. That's the only thing that they know. That's how they keep players in their game. That's all they know. But a single player, yeah. But it'll be grindy. You know it'll be grindy. That's the only thing they can do. This is Pearl Abyss, man. This I can download Cheat Engine in a single player. Will you be able to, though? What if they have Colonel level anti cheat on a single player game? Like Dragon's Dogma 2? Yeah, I don't know. Something. There's already mods for Dragon Sogma, which is interesting. Lots of mods out there. Elden Ring is the same way. There's a bunch of mods on Elden Ring. Script to get around it? Yeah, fair. I think mods came out week one, like randomized runs, yeah. When people are interested, man, they just get that stuff cranked out. What servers also exist for BDO? Join them, play with better drop rates and stuff. They're not the latest sort of self-host. Yeah, there's a lot of private servers out there. There's one big private server as well. But that is, I don't know. I don't recommend supporting a private server. It's a good way to see your money disappear. Advanced mods that change the whole game, yeah. Play those servers best an Iron Man. And Iron Man is already easy enough. Accelerated progression in a game that's already easy just doesn't really make any sense. Because, like, you're accelerating the progression to just have less players. And, like, no value in the gear that you progressed. But I think, uh, I think the Iron Man is actually pretty easy. I think getting gear in this game is really easy, and I think the Iron Man is a lot easier than I thought it would be.
Thankful for the additional Jatina pen. Yeah. A lot of people are. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Weird that they would do that as well. Maybe eventually they'll have just, you know, like six Jatina pens. And you'll just Jatina all your pens. But have them be like the Red Nose accessories. We well, you know what to do. I played the game, I was completely lost. Yeah, as a new player, like there's there's a lot to learn. Huge learning curve. But that doesn't make the game hard to get gear in. That just makes like learning the game hard. As soon as you have an idea of what to do, it becomes really easy again. Tutorial is too hard. <laughs> there used to not be a tutorial. Like way back in the day. They keep changing it. So like these days you have like that whole cut scene where you're walking through the desert and all that. That's pretty new. Before that they just dropped you at uh Ancient Stone Chamber. But before that, and what a lot of people don't know is that the game used to drop you in Olvia. It used to drop you right here. In Olvia. And uh, you were next to like a grass beetle field and it just dropped you there and told you to talk to this skill instructor guy over here. And you go talk to the skill instructor guy, it was like, it was a lot harder to get into. That's the OG stuff. That's like pre-DK launch was Ov Olvia. They've uh, they've done a lot for the new player experience. But it used to almost be like Elden Ring, where it just like drop you in, not really tell you anything, and then just good luck, man. Mexican game difficult is the time investment and commitment. Your average show who plays a few hours a week isn't gonna get very far. Yeah, and there's like so many things. There's so many items in the game and so many like systems that nobody knows about, stuff like that. It just takes a lot to learn. console launch like that. I think you had Ancient Stone Chamber, but it was basically the same thing from Ancient Stone Chamber, yeah. Just drops you in. Black Spirit's like, hey man, go talk to this guy. That's probably a big part of the reason why nobody cares about the story in the game. It's because it didn't actually like try to tell you the story until pretty recently. Farming ogre ring for the ogres, sort of pain. Yeah, I remember watching a. Um... You guys remember Private Wiggles? He, uh... I remember watching a stream where he was just grinding ogres on his witch because he needed an ogre ring. It was just like six hours. He was just swapping channels, killing ogres, and he didn't get a single ogre ring in six hours. And he just kept doing it. That was like his life. It's like, jeez, man. You saw the average gear score in Guild League apart? No. I, I have no interest in Guild League, so I haven't looked at it at all. Story doesn't draw you in either. Carrot is the chase for the loot, yeah. Yep, that's what the game is, yeah. Doesn't match our sim. That's like, it's created problems for me in other games. Because I'm such a freaking BDO nerd. I've been playing this game for so long that I just don't pay attention to story, right? So we get to another game and it's like, okay, let's play the game. 
and then it tries to tell you story for like 20 minutes and i'm just like i don't i don't know how to skip this because i'm just like so wired towards skipping literally every piece of story content Seven ten on NA, seven eleven on EU. Yep, so EU better than NA, is that what you're saying? That's what they're to do. I mean after level fifty two is real grind, yeah. Even getting fifty six was a lot of hours. Back when I started the game, level thirty took me two days. Level thirty. People grinded twenty four hours to get to level forty. Level 50 was hard cap. Level 50 was like level 67. <laughs> that's, that's how it was when I started. There was no concept of awakening or succession. None of that. Actually made Guildy good, but time gated. Yep, time gated is the biggest problem they have with stuff in this game. People would party grind. Great, now I'm ring. You would party grind, surrender your shrine, take turns AFKing and sleeping while the character is getting XP and the other grind it. Yeah. Crazy stuff. We played Diablo 4 since also loot driven. I actually played Diablo 4 when it first came out. And uh, I tried to play Druid. And Druid at launch was like tragically terrible. So I played something else. I don't remember what it was. But I played a little bit of it. We might revisit. See if they've uh, done some better things for the game. Same for me, start like one day after release. The good old days. Funny how programmed BDO veterans are into believing the game is no longer grindy because it no longer egregiously grindy. Yeah, I'm just like, hey man, an Iron Man isn't even that bad. And here you guys are like, hey, you've passed me and I'm not even on an Iron Man. I'm like, it's not that bad. This is nothing. Gear's super easy to get. And I'm like, yeah. It's probably just conditioning based on like what I have experienced over the last however knows how long. Nearly decade. Early game Druid is still rough, huh man? Early game strat is still dopamine tunnels until 60. I just explored the world, man. That's what I like doing in those games. Explore the world. Understandable what they suffered 100 hours of those items. Should have given shortcuts. And the good old days. Plus 15 used to be the highest that gear would go to as well, though. So there was no, like, downgrade system. It was just you spammed it until it went. Good old days, BDO. But Druid managed to hit 6 bill for crits. So Druid's very solid. Interesting. Are you like lightning druid or are you the the bear the slam druid? Cause last I played wolf was like terrible. 
Slime Druid was okay, and Lightning Druid was, like, arguably passable. But still worse than basically anything else you could play. It'll probably be on this. I'll probably make a channel in Discord. That you guys can drop your game suggestions, and then maybe when we're coming up the, on the end of one of the games that we're doing, I'll I'll run a poll in the Discord, see which one you guys would prefer next. There's definitely like way less interest in non BTO games from the community, which is understandable, but it's good to branch out, experience other things. BTO won't be around forever, and as sheltered as I am with BDO, I really need to branch out. Makes your fairy key passive focus with bear charge, or petrify. It's a mixed build, but everything feeds off itself. Pulverized Druid. Meta. Is that the slam skill? That sounds familiar, Pulverized Druid. Where do you use your precision hammer? Is that non, non Iron Man friendly? I did use it, and it uh, did not go. I didn't plan to use it, but I got convinced, and I knew it wouldn't succeed anyway, so it blew it up. Got to build the sick loot brand. I also just like want to experience other things, you know. BDO isn't going to be around forever, so my options are to like solely focus on BDO and nothing else. And then when BDO eventually dies, I'm like just in the wind, I guess. Got to figure it out. Or we build a community that's like based around the time, like the enjoyment of being here. And I work on all that kind of stuff, but with any game and we become like variety. Because that's the only thing that's sustainable. Variety is the only version of content creation that is truly sustainable. Uber bosses are insanely easy. It's a chill game to play. I think that was their problem with launch, right? It's the hardest boss in the game. The like crazy Lilith was killed in like three seconds or something. I think BDO has at least another decade left in it. You think so? I think BDO has not grown at all in the last five years, which is not a good sign. Maybe it will be around for the next decade, but that doesn't mean that I will enjoy it for the next decade. I'm already at the point where I'm doing challenge series just to stay in the game, so. I also am very against the direction that PA keeps moving in with their monetization, and I don't see that changing at any point in the future, so. Maybe it's, maybe it's not correct to say that BDO... Well, BDO definitely won't be around forever, but also my interest in BDO will definitely not be around forever. They keep pushing me away, so... Community is the answer. Community-driven content. Recommendation system. YouTube. Stumble when you try new things. So it readjusts its perception of the channel. Ideally, you would just like create a community that will just watch you play whatever and will join you with whatever. And then you just uh, have a good time doing what you want to do, hanging out with people. And make that sustainable in some way. Gotta be like interesting though. And gear was messed up. Had speed on record for Uber Druid at 11 seconds. Jeez. 
Valid opinion. Yeah. Can you elaborate on what parts of current monetization you don't like? I'm curious as a player that remembers the game through all publishers. Uh, everything is monetized. Everything that they announce or release also is monetized. Everything. It is not like this isn't a game where they're like, okay, let's make a good game. We'll get players to play it. We'll earn enough money. This is a game where they're like, if we add something to the game, their mentality is that if they are going to do the work to develop something for the game, they have to monetize it. So the crystal recovery expansion that's coming out, they're going to monetize the ability to use all of your butlers at once. They tried to monetize until they had an overwhelming backlash from the community. Calling your horse to you is monetized. Changing your horse's skills so that you can actually have a decent horse after putting in hundreds of hours of work to get a good good horse to get a to get a courser or a t10 mythical you have to pay money to ensure that it's good artisan memories exist there are three subscriptions to this game there are also pay to win elements the game is also buy to play so they they have all three monetization schemes they are using their partners, their content creator partners, as advertise machines for their new costumes that they know that the people in the West aren't interested in. And that is why you've seen content creators recently advertising the new outfits. Which I think is a pathetic way to use the resource that is content creators. I think it's such a, such a waste of that resource. They're, they're very egregious with their monetization. I think the global server merge could be considered in the future. I don't think so. I think they already have ping problems on one server. And if they ever did a global merge, they would have even more problems and the game would be unplayable. And I think they know that. They have shareholders now objective to make more money instead of improving their product. It's been that way for like many years at this point as well. There is no longer passion for this game. It is just a cash cow for their other projects and for their shareholders. No idea about that all made thing. Yeah. That's just one of the things, right? Another thing is there's two horse flutes, right? One of them is the 500 meter horse flute, and the other one is the unlimited horse flute, which costs a lot more money. The reason they added the unlimited horse flute is because there's a bug that exists with the 500 meter horse flute, where you can whistle your horse with trade items on it. And people are using that in the desert to basically like cheese the trading method in the desert. That's still not fixed. It's been it's been eight years. That's still not fixed. Their solution to that bug was, we'll just sell a better horse flute for way more money. It costs $22 per character to whistle your horse to you. It costs $64 for a skin for a boat that the majority of players in this game do not have. It costs $30 for a skin for your horse. Mostly don't like the monetization in general, not a particular recent monetization, because a lot you mentioned is the state of the game forever. Yep. I think uh, it's just so aggressive and so egregious. They try to monetize everything that exists in the game. They're not interested in making enough money to be successful. They are interested only in making as much money as physically possible. That's it. It's not about being sustainable. It's not about being successful. It's not about enough. It's about as much as possible. I don't, I think that the game should be monetized and I think it's perfectly okay to make money on your game. I don't mind that the outfits exist and all that. I hate the interaction with Krons from Outfits. I think that's freaking ridiculous and pathetic. 
and I don't like the way that they're using their partners to advertise things that they know people won't want to buy, so that people do buy them. I think that's also pathetic. I feel like current game is way more friendly towards free to play or very low spending than it was years ago. I don't think it is. I think the only thing that they've changed is that they've given you some pets for a quest line now. But the thing is, is you could always buy those on the market. What have they done for free to play players? They've made costumes exponentially more expensive. And that's it. That's all they've done. Costumes used to be 30 million silver on the market. Where is this thing? There it is. Don't understand why AAA game studios don't care about their reputation. Yeah, they're just like... The, the game has had a reputation of being pay to win for like... As long as it's been out. And they just fully lean into that. And they're just like, you think we're pay to win? Okay. They came out with two additional subscription services that didn't used to exist. They have increased the cost of like literally everything. They've added monetization to every single thing that they add to this game. Has to be monetized for some reason. It's ridiculous. They added the fairies, which are heavily monetized. And then they waited like forever and then added a new skill to the fairy that everybody feels like they have to have. Which again, heavily monetized. They added the maid thing, which was heavily monetized. It cost $30, by the way, for that maid that lets you use all your maids at once. $30. Give me costumes on every occasion so I don't have to bother buying them. Get five pets, a few more from class, light stones. And then get minus two on cooking, so I don't need the costume. Low spending, the one plus one pro boxes mean you can spend money very efficiently. Weight is way less of a problem, and it feels like every event gives you mates. Okay, so here's the thing. Let me let me address these one at a time. We'll go through it. We'll go through it. And I will tell you why they did that and why it's still a problem. So we'll start at the beginning. Give you costumes on every occasion. Um, they don't really give you good costumes, and it's not really on every occasion. It's only after you buy their pass. They'll give you a costume if you buy their pass. They also give you, a, like, the, the season pass or the daily special pass. You have to buy that to get the costume. So that's a way that they've monetized you. Also, the other way is Twitch drops. And the reason they do that is so that they can use their creators as advertisers to convince you to buy things. It is an investment in advertising, giving you a free costume. Because now they, they use their creators to advertise things for you to buy. Let's see what else. You can get five pets and a few more from quests. Yes, they have added five pets that you can get from quests. Actually, it's six, I believe, if you do Adaraxian. They're all tier one. Tier one pets are simply not good enough. If they gave you five tier fours, then fair enough. Sounds good. Or even five tier threes. Those are close enough. It's just not good enough. You still have to buy like $200 worth of pets to get tier fours. Light stones. You can get minus two cooking, so I don't need the costume. Yes. But then they also added in the light stone inventory expansion thing because you can only hold so many. And more people like pay to win that stuff now but it's not relevant we'll, we'll one up there you don't have to buy a 20 dollar costume to get one second cooking time for low spending the one plus one pro box means you can spend money very efficiently here's the thing none of the in-game stuff that you buy actually has value so it could literally be a dollar you know what i mean so the one plus one again is a marketing technique to get someone to spend more money. 
because you wouldn't have spent money before and now you did it's all about marketing it's just a way to get more money out of you wait is leo i still have a problem that's not even true in the very early game, i.e. like Madaya, weight is less of a problem. Once you get past Madaya, weight is worse. Olin's trash is 0.5. Dekia history on Aukman, you literally cannot grind there unless you have 26 storage maids. 26. Because you can't call your horse in there, which is something that they said they would allow you to do, but never did. So they are encouraging you to buy maids there as well. Everything they do is for money. Feels like every event gives me maids. Every event that you pay for gives you maids. Yep. Your season pass is the best place to get maids, but again, that costs money. Or this daily pass thing, which is now a permanent addition to the game, by the way, this daily special. Again, costs money. For you to get the things for free, you have to pay money. So it's not actually free. So there's a reason that they're doing all those things, and it's to get more money from you. PA's convinced themselves that pay for convenience isn't pay to win. Yeah. I, I actually, what I actually think is that they don't care if the game's pay to win or not. They only care about making money, and that's it. People are still choosing to play the game despite how pay to win it is. So they're just going to keep adding to it until people stop playing the game. And then they'll move on to the things that they actually care about. Which is Doke V and Crimson Desert and Plan 8 and whatever else they're working on. We are no longer the game that they care about. We are how they are paying for development of the games that they care about. It's a little bit sad. See a bit? Almost missed my meeting. Oh, jeez. Good luck. My hedgehog refuses T4. Oh jeez. Any news on Crimson Desert? I have no idea. I've not been paying attention to it. I have such a bad taste in my mouth from like the Perlibus company that I don't know that I care about it. Or any anything else that they develop. I understand how they function and I know that it, they're going to find a way to make it like either a huge barrier to entry as far as cost or they'll have a bunch of pay to win stuff in there and it won't be like dragon's dogma 2 pay to win which shouldn't exist but at least that's like three dollars per item it'll be like forty dollars per item because pa Aren't they owned by someone else years ago? No, they were published in the West by someone else. But now they are self-publishing. sure how good the economic state of KR is they're complaining as much as NA and EU they just don't they just don't buy things in KR that's why they're changing so much about the costumes on the market and the co cost of crons and vendor and stuff is because costumes just sit on the market in KR and nobody cares and nobody buys anything Are you at? Hello. Get your points are fair enough. I think a lot of what I think is colored by me accepting that the game is paid to win to begin with. 
question is just how bad is my life if I don't pay up? I really feel better than I used to in cacao days. Here's the thing, cacao didn't decide what went on the market. So to differentiate the two days, to the two publishers, doesn't make any sense. Because at the end of the day, it was Pearl Abyss deciding what they sold on the market, even in cacao days. Cacao didn't have control over that. So it's the same. It's the same people making the same decisions. But at the end of the day, the game is pay to win. It has a bad reputation of being pay to win, and it is very egregiously pay to win. And I think it would be perfectly acceptable if there were three subscriptions to the game and only cosmetics in the Pearl Shop that you couldn't melt for Krons to progress. Fair enough. Get rid of all the other pay to win stuff. Fair enough. But it is not that. Every single thing they add to the game, they feel the need to monetize, and I think that's ridiculous. He's referred to the state of the game, because I don't remember the dates. Yeah. That's fair enough. I don't think it's any better than it ever has been. I think it's worse. There are more things that are monetized now, which is not the positive direction of the game. And they're adding even more things to monetize. you because you have more experience you shouldn't believe me just because i have more experience but the data is out there you could if you're like really interested and you want to like cross-reference then go do that absolutely go look it up go formulate your own opinion you know what i mean can't loot without pets aka the game flow is not fluent Oh, and by the way, you need a tent to stay longer at your grind spot. Hey, did you know about limited bag space? Hey, pay for more weight because your silver is heavy. You know, you can get loot. This funny clown costume is going to suit you well. Yeah, basically, yeah. And then the thing that like really pushed me over the top. Like, I've always been upset with the monetization of the game and stuff, but I've never like... Like, actively spoken out against it until recently because recently they have they have had like this sign up for partners where you can sign up to get the new costume and advertise it to your community you're required to advertise it to your community to get it for free and they're doing that because they know that these costumes have less interest like less people are interested in the west outside of korea like the school outfits and that stuff, they know that the West doesn't care about those. So they came up with this plan to monetize their partners in that way without actually, by the way, they didn't actually give their partners money. All they gave them was a free costume and told them they had to advertise the costume. So they're not actually paying for it. It's free. And they are required to advertise it and not melt the costume. And they are required to talk about it on stream. That, that pushed me over the top. That was like, that is not how you use the partners in your game. That is not how you use the people that are the most connected to the community. That's not how you do that. That was, that was the final straw for me. That was, that just pushed me over the top. So that your soul is mine. But not even because like, they literally didn't even give them money for it. There was no like, they just gave you a free costume. That was it. So it's not even sellout. It's just like they're using their partners in exactly the wrong way. Instead of using their partners to determine how to improve the game, 
and make it more enjoyable for players and find alternate ways to monetize the game that people are okay with which is their focus they used it to hey we know this costume isn't going to do well let's use our partners to make it do a little bit better And that was the day that I decided that I don't care about meeting partner requirements. I'm just going to try and make the best content I can. And if I lose my partnership because I can't make requirements, then I don't care. What if you say no, they cancel partner? No, you, you don't have to sign up for it. It's an opt-in. I never signed up for any of that stuff and they never sent me a costume. But quite a lot of people did. You probably saw a bunch of people talking about the new costumes and stuff. They've done it the last couple of times. Yeah, we're here playing the game, supporting them in one kind of way. Yeah, that is the problem at the end of the day, is that we still play the game. My pets are going to die. I need more food. Yeah. It's just like, it's not getting better is the problem that I have. They're, they're moving in the wrong direction, not the best one. No maids available, great. Notice the outfit advertisements? Yeah. Some partners are telling you that they received it from PA to advertise it, and some partners are not telling you that. gone for a while let's just talk of a private server there's no talk of a private server we don't talk about private servers we're talking about pearl abyss and their aggressive monetization can okay, this my question is what outfit we talk about the school one the last several that they've done i think the last two or three Maybe four. I'm not even sure. It's been a few of them now. Let's see the concept art for a new male class, Sword and Pipe. Yeah, they uh, they showed that at Calfound Ball in December, right? There's a lot of people that are excited for it just because that picture, which is crazy. Aggressive advertisement for missing out, abuse of members of community. I don't know, how can someone be like that and still think it's fine? Yep. Yep, so you guys like may have noticed that the number of videos I do in a week has fallen off a cliff. Like I used to do three a week every single week. And the reason was because that's what I needed in order to get the viewership requirements to maintain the partner program. And I had lost focus on trying to improve the videos and trying to get better at editing and get better at storytelling and things like that. So now like we're way down on video releases. Like I do one a week now, 
And it's because I'm trying to focus on improving and becoming a better creator rather than focus on their requirements. And because of that, I'm absolutely going to lose the partner program. I'm going to fall below the requirements and we are going to get kicked from the partner program. But I don't want you guys to worry about that because I don't care about the partner program. I care about making better content. I care about my YouTube channel, the Twitch, you guys. That's what I care about. Some like partner program of a company that's like that. I'm not interested. Good game. Totally ruined it by money grabbing bad politics. Yeah. The potential of this game is so incredible and that's why people still play it. It's all about the potential. But the worst part about this game is Pearl Abyss. The company that owns it is the reason it fails. And it's just sad, man. We looking. 57 raw Cafras, 67 dust. Not bad at all. One thirty already, holy. Where'd the day go, man? Man, I have to gym today and everything. Oofta. Turn with Super Chill. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's no Gaifin, but I think if you compared the Fangs and the Kafras versus just Gaifin Kafras, I think it's probably a little bit better than Gaifin. The issue is actually getting a party for the fangs. That can be pretty challenging sometimes. Uh, most of my pets are dead. They on zero? Yep. Three of my pets are on zero. Oh, jeez. Got Fallen God Armor and Gloves. Pankutum. Narc's Tet Rings. But that helmet, man. That's because I, I haven't re-tagged. Check it out. I just haven't re-tagged. That's our, that's our actual gear. I just didn't feel like re-tagging or swapping the gear over, so I just grabbed a helmet that I had. And we used that. Because I, like, I only grind at Thornwood on the Mewa, and we didn't need it. Right. Is this a trash spot? Not really. It's it's kind of like a nothing spot. Just funny looking. I mean, I could just take it off. We're 310 DP without a helmet. Does that look more weird? We might actually take damage, though, if we do this.
Okay, how we looking? How we looking? 58 Caffres, 64 Dust. Also 10 Fangs, that's not bad at all. No complaints here on the Fangs. Hello there. Khans underscores that were just followed. Khans, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. What are your Kaffers going into? The boots. We just hit C6 boots. So we're working towards C7. These need to go to C13. And then my Kudum needs to go to C5. So we can break out our handy calculator. And we will subtract however many Kaffers this is. 70. So we need 11,172 Kaffers. And then we'll be done. I gotta repair, I think. Yeah, it's been a few hours since I repaired. that stone called i use vel's heart instead is yours better mine is not better by a long shot it's called an ator's power stone and it's it's much worse it only has one sheet ap on it and it has worse stats but the reason i use it is because i can't actually get a vel um with the restrictions I have as an Iron Man, plus my like real life work schedule, I can't even go to Vel, so I'll never get a Vel. So it is my best in slot. Which is totally fine, I don't mind it. I didn't even repair. Gotta go to repair. Heidel Ball Vel, perhaps? I don't see a reason why they would give us a, a Vel at Heidel Ball. We're not console. We have Vel. You know what I mean? I should probably get on the horse, huh? stuff in our inventory. This is looking like the ultimate. Okay, let's take a peek here. Eight eighty nine. Chipping away at it. Okay. 
Let's see if we're going to get a duo neck. I would guess probably not. I do have enough to go. Let's see. Duo to try, I guess. We'll give it a shot. I don't think I've even made a try neck before. But here we go. It goes duo for sure. Okay, now we just hit the easy try. Great. Pain. It's my fault. I have really bad luck in games. I also have bad luck, cons. I'm 4 for 22 on Ted Accessories. It's going well. Can I speak bad about PA before enhancing? That's okay. We're going to get a pen disto right here. Right now, today. To disprove your theory. Eleven point nine percent. This is the second pen accessory attempt we've had. Here we go. Plus one. just that easy that's how you get a plus one fail stack it's 229 now easy 229 stack <laughs> i'm not even going to use the 229 stack for anything can you use cross for iron man i don't know much about the challenge i can yeah that's uh what all of our silver is good for basically it's just crons You on NA? This challenge is on NA, yes. And the next challenge is on EU. So we'll get a little bit of everything. Which would be nice. Should probably do pit as well. I haven't done pit in like forever. Hello, sir. Can we talk about how terrible this fade-in thing is? Can I disable that? Why do they gotta change my stuff, man? Why are we fading in everything? I hate that. 0 out of 10. They probably saw some like YouTube edits of some montages where everything just fades in on the screen and they're like, oh, guys, guys, we got to add a fade to our stuff. Otherwise, it's less good. And here we are with everything just fades in. It's terrible. Someone was bored of PA. Must have been. Putting pre orders for embers in a tours is so slow. You'll get them though. 60 out of 100, you'll get it. You got this. Okay. 
Just got her voice in Korean. So much better than English. I can't even hear it. I, I actually just can't even hear it. I think it's in Japanese right now or something. I don't know. Fresh coat of paint over rust doesn't make something less rusty. What's your main class, by the way? So my original main was Zerker. I played Zerker for like seven and a half years or so. And then I also played Ninja for a little over a year, year and a half, something like that. So those are my main classes on my main account. And then this one, on this Iron Man, my main class is Scholar. And on the EU Ultimate Iron Man, my main class will be Ranger. But originally a Zerker main. Are there already uh, Reddit posts about how bad the fade in thing is? Are people already on that. Lord of the Undead. Oh man, I hate this guy. I hate this guy. Saw them already? Okay, maybe they'll maybe they'll remove it. They sometimes remove things when people get really upset about them. And that that looks like one of the things they're gonna get really upset about. Okay, we gotta find the guy with the sword. They all have a sword. Gotta find the one that runs away with the sword. Or is it just the tankier one? It's none of those. It's that one right there. Look at him. Look at him flee. Sure, blocking a lot there, gay. Okay. okay. Got to find the way the guy that runs away again. It wasn't that guy. It looked like that guy. I've been circling too fast. So it is. None of them are running away. Just, uh, I guess, kill both of these guys. To him there. That's him there. See how suspicious that was? Alright, now it should be the twins. Bring my hammer cells. Almost 3k minless on <laughs> Oh, man. And you got choice out here just like blowing them up on any earring attempts and everything else. It's so funny. It's a, it's an event that only helps endgame players. Their intent was to help newer players with pen accessories and all they did was help endgame players because now they have an endless supply of non-downgradable accessory attempts. It's so funny. Like, they just don't know what they're doing over there at PA, man. They just don't know. It's so funny. <laughs> it's just like, what are they doing, man? Gosh, what are they doing?
Sayazar. It's free silver for non end game players, though, so I don't mind. But it really isn't because there's 3,000 of them listed. You can't even sell it. They get to buy an unlimited number of them. 